Good evening and welcome to After Lights Out. Tonight, science. Stevenson watching his kettle boil over, Pasteur examining his fungus, Sir Clive Sinclair looking at his bank statement. <laughs> Scientists have undeniably vastly helped to improve our lives, or have they? Irene. Well, of course, science is quite simply an international greed-driven conspiracy to exploit women. Mm. Oh, oh, there we go. Sorry, entirely Beam agree with me that. up, Scotty. <laughs> of course, of course. What has science done for womankind? Nothing. Yet it, it's given us the expertise to blow up an area the size of Wales. Yes, well, why haven't we then, eh? Why haven't we? <laughs> Darling, I'm sorry, it's a bit rich coming from you, to be honest, because if there's anything that science has done, it's made women's lives a doddle. Rubbish. Oh, what with, with you, you, you've got your automatic cookers and you've got your electric hoovers and your, your laser-driven microwaves. Oh, so, you great northern nincompoop. Women don't just cook and clean, you know. Well, not anymore, they don't. No, not since, not since Mr. Hoover and Mr. Oven. No, now you're <laughs> sit, sit, sitting around reading your Cosmopolitan looking for your G-spot. Ah, oh, it's, um, it's just inside the penalty area. Oh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. You'll have to face it, my dear. Due to Einstein, there is now a new kind of clean. Einstein, what a marvellous scientist and a lovely, lovely fellow. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Of course, I personally, I personally, I lean towards Irene here, but I must also incline towards Martin. Do you need a wider sofa? <laughs> no, thank you, I'm fine. The question we must ask ourselves is surely this. Should we expend so much of our energy trying to peek inside Pandora's box? Oh, are we allowed to say that? <laughs> of course, science can be dangerous in the wrong hands. Yes. Nazi Germany. Oh, yes, tomorrow's world. Mm. Terrible. <laughs> but I mean, is ignorance really bliss? Well, I think we should ask Wayne that, really, don't we? <laughs> sorry, I didn't understand the question. No. Look, I'm sorry, I can hold my silence no longer. Oh, go on, dear, give it a try. <laughs> we really should be turning to nature. Mm. Now, I've just returned from visiting the lesbian um, inner city farm. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, no, dear. Please, please, please. The lesbian inner city farm cooperative in Birkenhead. And there, you see, they use all pure organic methods. And all the lentils and the pulses are grown deep in the excreta of hand-reared oxen. Yes, well, I've had enough of this bullshit. Look, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, science will be doing its job, right, when it produces a chicken that can stuff itself, cook itself, and fall me down the pub on a Sunday lunchtime to tell me when it's ready. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. yes. No, but this is, um... Genetics is surely a vital issue. Well, I... Well, of course, I am absolutely dismayed. My body is a temple. What? Only open on Sundays? <laughs> no, but, no, but, I really, with respect, I, I have been closely involved in this, and, I, and it was one of the most exciting moments of my life. I, I was working with a group of people on a special project with the Oxford Genetic Research Department, and my assistant, Valerie, and I came very close to making an earth-shattering discovery. It was 1 a.m., there was nobody else in the building, and we came within seconds of creating human life. What happened? Her husband came in and switched the lights off. <laughs> now there you yeah. see, now there you see. Now how far do you want scientists to go? Well, I think I speak for millions, but I think I don't want them fiddling around with my genes. Mm, I should wait till you're asked, really, look. <laughs> yes. yes, but surely I, science must always take risks. I mean, ever since the first Stone Age geneticists uh, tried to, uh, to, to cross the pterodactyl with a mastodon. Yeah, what did they get, do you think? Killed. Mm. <laughs> you see, technology is our handmaiden. Mm. Oh, I've got one of those. Then the goblin handmaiden, it's awfully good, you know, makes your tea, wakes you up all at the same time. Unless, of course, you forget to put the pot there and then you've got a stream of scalding hot water right in your ear hole. Shut, Shut up! <laughs> but I think it was Socrates who said, the only thing that I know is that I know nothing. Yes. Well, he'd be in good company here then, wouldn't he? <laughs>
Susie Mellons meets the Whopper Chopper. <laughs> I didn't think of warning. 